Hello fellow modelers, uh, Bruce here again. Uh, if you watched my last video, last week's video, uh, you heard me talk about the fact that I was about to begin uh, building some bench work for a rebuild of both the Jersey Highlands Railroad and the Slate Run Railroad that I had built back in New Jersey before we moved here to Michigan. Um, and what you're looking at here is uh, Oh, uh, probably two-thirds of the wood that I'll need to do the framing for that layout. And I talked about how I ripped um, basically two by twos, uh, one by twos and uh, one by threes from some planking that we had uh, taken off of the old deck when we had the deck replaced. And uh, if you look at uh, this board right here, that's basically a one by six and uh, that's the decking that I've ripped into those longer lengths and uh, yeah so I have a lot of wood to get started with here and uh, I thought what I would do is start a series of uh, videos that show the build of, of this two deck and double deck uh, layout with the lower deck being the Jersey Highlands Railroad and the upper deck being the uh, HO, HON3 logging railroad, the slate run. Uh, I have a sketch of a, what I'm thinking of doing right now. Uh, if you look at it, it looks like, uh, yeah, what's the state it looks like? A little bit like maybe Idaho or something, but uh, there's a bathroom up here and a hallway leading to the bathroom, but I can fit a, uh, a, kind of like a shelf layout, portion of the layout being a shelf, of a little over 11 inches uh, wide and uh, a little over 8 feet long. And uh, the reason I think that's worthwhile is I, you can do an awful lot of modeling in uh, 11 inch depth. And if you don't believe me, look up my video, oh it's probably about 6 years old now, but it's a video that has the words quarry branch in it. And uh, it's on the Jersey Highlands Railroad back in New Jersey. Everything that you see in that video is done in 11 inches or less in depth. Uh, after you get out of the hallway, it'll go into what is looks more like a peninsula kind of setup. And, uh, that is at its widest here, going to be five and a quarter uh, feet. And uh, this is to allow some room for us when we come down the steps into the basement to not get caught on the corner. And it comes down to four feet here. I'm showing it at seven feet long right now. I might make it eight. And it has the ability, if I get done scenicing and track laying and everything on these two decks, and I still have the... Uh, capacity to build more layout, I can just extend it further into the basement. So that's kind of the uh, feeling I have right now. The uh, up, but this is basically the way the lower deck would look. The upper deck would pretty much mimic it, except for I'm leaning towards not having the peninsula come out quite all the way on the upper deck. Maybe hang back about a foot so that when people have a tendency to bend over to look at the lower deck, they're not uh, banging their head on the upper deck's uh, framework. But we'll see. That's uh, a little up in the air, and you'll see it unfold over the next uh, month or two as I start working on the, uh, on the framework. I am going to do a very light-built uh, framework, uh, as you can tell from the fact that I'm using 1x3s and 1x2s. And I think once I get one section of the, uh, that shelf layout going back toward the bathroom done, you'll see what I have in mind. But uh, it'll have the framework I've talked about. It'll have then a layer at the bottom of Luan plywood. That's just thick enough so that if I want to screw uh, turnout machines or... Uh, wiring of some other type or lighting, I have something to screw into. And then it will be pink foam um, on top of that. So that's why it's going to be quite lightweight. Um, 
I'm just getting ready to start uh, cutting uh, that. There's my chop saw already on the workbench and uh, my uh, trusty electric screwdriver. And the only thing I've laid out any money on for this new layout so far is three boxes of framing screws and uh, various lengths, two, two and a half, and three inches. And uh, that cost me, believe it or not, this is about $55 worth of screws so far. So uh, that's it. I'll pick up, uh, I think, when I have the framing done for one section of that uh, uh, shelf, and then we can pick up from there. Talk to you then. Okay, it's time for an update on, uh, on the framework build here. Um, what I have done so far is framed out just uh, one section for the uh, shelf that's going to go down um, along the hallway toward the bathroom. And uh, it's eight and a half feet long and it's uh, 11 and a quarter inches which will just fit in and not uh, interfere with the with the door to the bathroom. And there's a slight bow here. Um, it's almost 11 and a half inches in the middle. So what I plan on doing is putting a couple of uh, cross braces underneath, uh, which will have a couple purposes, but it will bring it in to a, a uniform width. So I wanted to uh, just show you what I had in mind. I, uh, these would be the one by, what I've been calling the one by threes. And here's some what I'll have been calling one by twos, which will fit in like this, get screwed in. And the second one down at the bottom, like that. And someplace I have the two end pieces. One, let's see here. Put this underneath here so that it doesn't pull out. There's one there, and this one down here. So that, what it does is provide a uh, a shelf, if you will, that. Remember I said to you that what would go on top of this would be a layer of Luan and uh, then an inch and a half of pink foam. So to give you that idea, I, have, I haven't cut the Luan to size yet, but here's a scrap of Luan um, that I will, let's see, bring it a little bit closer, I guess. I'll put it up on this end. So that's the layer of Luan. Picture it along the whole way, screw down. Here's a piece of inch and a half foam. And when it comes in, you'll see that it's exactly flush with the top there. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit there. So that's, that's flush. And uh, I wanted it that way. That's why this probably isn't a traditional one by three. You know, since I was starting with a one by six and cutting it down, I measured exactly what the thickness would be uh, to bring the foam up to the top. And uh, now what I plan on doing along the whole length, so that's a base. And then I'm gonna put another layer of uh, inch and a half foam at least. Uh, on top of that, but bring it all the way out to the outside edges, that 11 and a quarter inches. So there'll be another whole length of foam, and in some places maybe even a third layer so I can do some contouring of scenery and so forth. Consider this to be sea level, and then everything above it, above sea level, and then I can gouge it out into uh, stream beds and, and ponds and anything else that I wish. So that's, that's the, the concept uh, that I have going for my bench work. I've been thinking about this 
since I first moved to uh, Michigan. I got to tell you that uh, back in New Jersey, my, my bench work was uh, anything but lightweight. Uh, I was always crawling right up on top of the bench work to, uh, uh, to do scenery work and so forth because it was so wide in some places that I couldn't uh, reach it just from the outside. This one will be a lot more lightweight because I want to do double deck and uh, especially on the bottom deck is fine. I could make it heavy and you know, it'll be have legs that go down to the floor, but the upper deck um, is going to be suspended differently and I wanted it to be as light as I uh, could make it while still making it uh, sturdy enough for, uh, for the work I was going to do on it. But again, I know, you know a lot of you are looking at them where they're awful narrow, but as I said before, I saw that you can do an awful lot of scenery work. Um, in, in 11 inches. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have some fun with this. Uh, you know, the hobby of model railroading that we all enjoy is, is very diverse. And uh, different people get enjoyment out of the hobby in, in many different ways. And uh, you know, some people are just basically model builders. Um, they're focus of their models are railroad related um, or customers of railroads. So that's the tie in with model railroading. But they'll just build perhaps a little diorama with their models in it and maybe have a stationary locomotive in the scene. And that's how they enjoy the hobby. And uh, you know, there's others that will build those models and either bring them over to a friend's house or to their club layout and install them. And never build a layout of their own um, and they're having a blast and uh, of course there's those that have modules and belong to modular groups and then there's those of us who you know build uh, layouts of our own none is better than the other it's just how you're enjoying the hobby and uh, as you watch this unfold <clears throat> you need to get an idea of how I enjoy the hobby and, uh, you know, I know that those people, there are many, many people who real enjoyment in a hobby is operations. To operate a layout as if it was just a scaled down real railroad. And they get tremendous satisfaction and enjoyment out of it. But I'm not into operations. And that's key uh, as, you, as you watch the build unfold over the ensuing months and probably years. Um, <clears throat> I'm basically a model builder and a scenery maker. And uh, I do enjoy having locomotives meander through the scenes I have created in front of the structures or behind the structures that I've built. And so as you watch me start to uh, lay track and so forth, um, and I'm sure some of you will, will do this automatically if you're into operations. You would think, boy, if you would only add a passing track here, or if you only redirected that track there, you could really do some uh, terrific operations. But uh, if you offer that advice, I will probably not heed it because I am not into operations. And uh, that's, that's key for you to uh, to understand as, as uh, this series unfolds. The other thing uh, that you will find out is uh, being the old timer that I am, um, you know, my last layout was, uh, didn't, was not DCC, it was uh, cab and block design and so will this one be uh, cab and block design. And uh, I'm comfortable with it, I grew up with it, my last layout was it, and uh, this one will be as well. So again, you know, different folks get their enjoyment in different ways, and the main thing is, is that we all enjoy what we're doing. So um, 
I'll do the phase three of uh, this particular initial video when I have the second one of these uh, boxes made up. I'll bring them downstairs and have them somewhat in place so you start to get a feeling for you know, why I was limited to the 11 and a quarter inches and so forth. And uh, we'll go on from there. So until the last part of the video, continue enjoying the hobby. Well, I uh, had to go and try to buy some pink foam to continue on with the project. Uh, the pink foam that I had been using was left over from a one-to-one pro -one project here in Michigan that I did, uh, oh, I guess three summers ago. So, you know, pre-COVID pre anyway. And, uh, boy, stickers, talk about sticker shock. Uh, you know, in the post-COVID uh, supply chain problem world um, and with the worst inflation I've seen in, uh, I guess, since Jimmy Carter was president, uh, I just wasn't ready for uh, how much pink foam had increased. But I was going to buy it and then I kept looking in the aisles at uh, Home Depot and I found this insulation board, which um, it's quite a bit different and quite a bit cheaper, at least $10 a uh, four foot sheet, cheaper than the pink foam. You can see, I think, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, okay, you can see it's made by uh, Plastifab. Let's see if we can get the Plastifab, and it's called Durospan Insulation. The big difference is, is that it's kind of like, uh, let me see if I can spin this a little bit and uh, maybe zoom out a little bit so you can see. Okay, you can see that it's a white board, kind of like the, the foam that they use in packing. Now, if you have any experience with that, you know that it doesn't cut or uh, sculpt anywhere as near as easily as the denser pink foam. And it's got a uh, layer of uh, the green vinyl on the front and something that is made to look like an aluminum backing. And uh, I really don't need either of those, and certainly glue would not stick to this side as well. But I found out that both peel off quite easily. And uh, so I bought these to use as the first layer that brings us up to, uh, you know, up, up to what I was calling sea level. Let me go back out a little bit and you can see what I'm talking about here. So here's the... Uh, the framing for the two long strips that will go along the hallway. This has what was left over the pink foam up to level here. This one I, I did manage to get Lou on. Uh, that pricing was, although it was probably twice what I used to pay, was you know in the $22, $23 range for a 4x8 sheet. I needed three more sheets of that. I did have one 4 by 8 sheet I had brought back uh, from New Jersey that had been unused. So this uh, white foam uh, that we were talking about will go down here and bring it up to sea level. Then I'm going to put, uh, I did buy some more pink foam, and I'll put that on the next level up, which will be kind of the baseline for uh, most of my scenery work, and then pieces of it to go higher and so forth where I want to have... Uh, uh, more more changes in elevation, but at least by buying four sheets of this, um, I saved you know enough money to buy uh, a couple, uh, one or two more sheets of this. So uh, yeah, that's where we are right now. Uh, I'll <clears throat> now bring it up to uh, or bring these down into the basement and uh, finish up this video by showing you where these go in place. See you then. Okay, here you see, uh, let's call it the lower deck um, 
kind of sitting on top of some boxes just to show you how it fits uh, in the space to the left of the door to the bathroom in the background there and uh, you know, the, the second level will this is going to be raised from there obviously this is too low I just have it sitting on the boxes but it'll be probably around uh, well, certainly more than three feet tall on the first level and then the second level I'll try to leave 16 inches at least between the two decks. Uh, this deck, besides being screwed to the wall, uh, will have, I guess, three or four braces at a 45 degree angle uh, lagging into the wall as well, and that should support the bottom. I didn't want to have legs going down to the floor that uh, will prevent me from vacuuming and uh, also be something that I'll be tripping on constantly, clumsy oaf that I am. So this is uh, eight and a half feet long and uh, then will come the peninsula. Let me back out a little bit and uh, show you what that's going to look like. So there's a doorway here that goes back into a storage area and I need to leave access for that. So what you'll see here is that I've already cut a board that is uh, itself, uh, let's see, eight foot, 10 inches long. And if I bring that here right to the edge of that, you'll see that it fits into that spot right there. And that's the way this will be and then come out into a peninsula here. So having said that now, um, I'll leave this video here and uh, we'll pick up uh, with it once I have framed out the, uh, the peninsula and my son will come over and help me mount the uh, two levels of the shelf I'll call it, the shelf extension and this level. <coughs> this one will have uh, legs that go down to the floor and that'll just leave mounting the peninsula on the second level and I'll show you what my thoughts are on that in the next video. All right, talk to you soon.